A New Zealand food story is brought to you by the Balance Farm Environment Awards. Ah, he's been open for 18 months now. I'm super proud of what we've achieved. But now I want to move on and discover what's next for this restaurant. We have to unearth more things in this country. I know they're out there. I know there's some amazing suppliers. How can I be the best I can be if I don't go visit these people? If I don't go learn from them, understand them, understand the ingredients? You can't find the answers to those questions in the restaurant, on the hotline, sweating your bollocks off, plating food every night. You have to get out there. So we're going to. That's what we're doing. <laughs>this season of a New Zealand food story has been epic and there's no better way to end this season than a trip to the top of the country. My first stop is Whangarei with its unspoiled white sand beaches, native bush and scenery galore the winterless north is now home to Owen Shuffley who couldn't have settled in a better place. Hello. Hello there. How are you? Not too bad yourself. Where are we? Are we in the islands? Ben, nice to meet you. Owen. How are you, Owen? Yeah. Good to see you. This place is incredible. It's like an island in the native bush. You look like some uh, crazy uh, banana dealer or something, you know? Well, when we first <laughs> came here and I cut this out, I had the, the police air helicopter flying over here <laughs> a few times. <laughs> Since then, uh, they haven't bothered me. They, they realised I'm growing bananas. <laughs> The funny thing is, I actually came here for pineapples. I wasn't expecting this because most of the world's bananas are grown within 30 degrees of the equator. But with what Owen has carved out in the Northland bush, you'd easily be forgiven for thinking you're somewhere in the tropics. I mean, there's an incredible amount of bananas on there. How much? Bana how many bananas on a bunch? Probably 150 to 200. Oh, I just didn't have any idea about that. You know, our restaurant Ahi is all about like New Zealand food and New Zealand ingredients, and so it's super exciting to know that. We have commercially available bananas grown in New Zealand. I'm so excited right now. Um, have you got any bananas that we can harvest at the moment? We'll have a look. Okay, yep. awesome. This is awesome. So this is basically the bell you take off. Oh, yeah, okay. These are all the male flowers, yeah. Can I get that to the restaurant? Can I get... When you send... I, I'll pick you a couple for the restaurant. Because I'm going to do a dish in here like that. Yeah. Like we could like do a dessert in here or something. Possibly, I mean, look yeah. at that. It's just absolutely made for it being a plate. Yeah. Owen is originally from South Africa, where he grew tropical fruit. And one thing he has brought over from South Africa, along with his love of bananas, is his prickly pear knowledge. So cactus as well. That's right. Prickly pear. Prickly pear. I, I thought a prickly pear was like... a actual pear. No, they grow them in big time in Mexico and also in South Africa. Just take it like that. just want to taste a bit raw. Sort of tastes like a capsicum. Take you a few leaves that you, you can experiment with. There's also passion fruit growing in the Manuka wild, yeah? I don't know if you want what? to take a photograph. This is passion fruit. Uh, when you seem to plant it and nurse it, it doesn't do as well, but yeah, if you let them grow naturally and they just grow in the Totra tree. This place is like another world. By having a go, he figures out what works and what doesn't. And more often than not, his experiments pay off. It's a coffee and they call coffee cherries. And they, no, they're edible. I've never, ever, ever, ever seen a coffee tree in the flesh. Try that one. Quite it tastes nothing like coffee. No. <laughs> it's like kind of like a lychee. Mm. I'm speechless. I was, first I've been amazed, then super impressed, and now I'm just like gobsmacked. There's every corner you turn, there's something amazing I didn't even know grew here, you know? Are we going to cut those bananas? Yeah, man. There we go. People will say that, you know, that doesn't look good. But that has been ripened. Naturally. Naturally. Well, these bananas that get harvested overseas, they get harvested way green. And they're gassed. Gassed, shipped from the other side of the world. And here we have New Zealand bananas, like, like 
ripen to the core. It's amazing. Oh, wow. Oh, it's so different than the supermarket. It's, yeah, no. It's got a firm texture, but it's just sugary sweet, but balanced. You see how that ripped apart? Watch this when you rip it apart. It's, you have to quite struggle to bend it laterally. I mean, this is a great, I reckon we could cook with this banana. Yeah. Uh, like shave it and caramelize it, make a dish. After trying to keep up with Owen's whirlwind plantation tour, it's finally time to see what I came here for. These are the uh, smooth... Pineapples! <laughs> smooth cayennes. You can wow. see... Look at them! They haven't got any thorns on their leaves. You know, in the supermarkets, you never get pineapples with tops anymore. Like, uh, look how beautiful it is. Why do they cut it off? Thousands of weed seeds can fit in the top of ah. the pineapple. And, that's a, and for biosecurity with meth, this is a pineapple that's starting to flower. But that's different from the fruit, right? That's the flower. Each little segment is a multiple fruit, yeah. Wow, yeah, that's cool. So every one of those little purple flowers there turns into... One segment. A pineapple. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Native to South America and grown in the most tropical of climates, I just can't believe pineapples are grown here in the north of New Zealand. I love them small like that. They're so cool. Smell it. It takes 18 months before these little guys are ready to harvest, but trust me, it's worth the wait. Oh my God. It's so much sweeter. Yeah. You know these pineapples that you're getting at the moment from the supermarket, they're like, they're not even gold and yellow inside. No. They're sort of like white. Yep. And they're, and they're just not sweet and they're so acidic, you know? Mm. I'm gonna shake your hand. Did you? I'm gonna <laughs> thank you. Seriously, mm -hmm. that's been a tropical whirlwind. I just can't believe the things that I've tasted. Um, you've totally blown my mind. I'm so excited. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, I mean, look at that. That's just so beautiful. Mm. Ooh. <laughs> Bloody pricked me. Up next, the north delivers even more remarkable fruits, and I visit the far north to experience a truly free-range pig farm. I'm in Whangarei, known for its unique architecture, contemporary art and international yachting community. It's also home to amazing produce like Maunga Tapere berries. Hey mate, hey, how Patrick. you going? Good to see you. Glad to see you make it. Directions okay? Yeah, easy. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> Come on through. We've got awesome. a uh, fantastic little setup ready for you. Uh, you wanted to pick some berries, right? Love to. Oh, I've got berry picking for you, mate. <laughs> We've got five new people starting today as well. What? And so you're our number six. Ben, this is Gail, uh, one of our supervisors who's doing the induction, and Shah, who's our operations manager. Hi, guys. Uh, I've got you? a new victim for you guys today. Here they use state-of-the-art technology. Each picker is given a watch to scan in, track your picking, and keep quality control at its highest. And then we'll scan our watches with the supervisor. Any questions about that? Yes. Um, how many berries are we allowed to eat per day? You can go to the service station down the road and you can buy them for six dollars fifty. So you can eat as many as you want. <laughs> After my induction, it's off to work in the raspberry block. But first, I've got to pass a crucial test, and it's not what I was expecting. So obviously, you did a colour test uh, before you came to work today, like hey. everyone. Colour test. Yeah. So every every employee that we get has to do a colour blindness test. Because it is amazing the number of people that don't recognise red colour properly. Which, you know, makes me wonder about the safety of our roads in New Zealand. But anyway, um, it's because, you know, you're not just picking a raspberry, you're picking a ripe raspberry. Okay. So you want to hold the calyx here, yeah. and then grasp the top of the berry and just yeah. pull it gently. And so you can see how it's got hollow centre in it, it's yeah. really fragile, and we're going to gently place it. It's that real fine balance, you're walking that line of being just ripe enough, but not too ripe. Yeah. That's enormous. So remember, jug not mouth. And so if you think we've been here for around about 10 minutes, an average picker should have picked 2 kgs in that time, which is around about 8 jugs. Yeah, I would have done that but you were talking too much. <laughs> I've weighed my bucket. Not quite 2 kilos, but it's time to make up for lost time and put the foot down. So you're a gun uh, rally driver right here? Uh, or in my own head, at least. <laughs> uh, back yeah. in the day, yeah, used to do a bit of rallying. It's been a 
family passion of ours. Mum and Dad actually met at a rally prize giving. Oh, okay. uh, so, so I don't know if I had any choice really in the matter. <laughs> I've co-driven for Dad, Mum's co-driven for me and we've wow. won events together and it's a great experience. Along with being a champion co-driver, Lindsay's in charge of pest control. Nice to see you. What are you doing here? I am starting to plant what I call my insectary plants out, which are plants that I plant to attract beneficial insects. Stand here for five minutes and you'd be absolutely gobsmacked how many insects wow. you see. This is a really good source of yeah. habitat and yeah. food for them yeah. in order for them to go through into the crops. So this will flower, will go to seed and next spring more stuff will come up and it will just be sort of like a laneway of protection. Correct, that's right. The beneficial insects go on to pollinate and help the orchard by protecting it from other pests. Lindsay has another secret weapon though. I saw a cabbage white caterpillar in the raspberries here and I thought, oh, I don't like the look of that. I read somewhere that cabbage whites are territorial and I decided to try making some cabbage white scarecrows. Oh, that's super cool. Thank you. <laughs> and it's a cheap, easy, quick, solution to a potential problem. Sustainability is a big part of Maunga Tapiri Berries. Their pillars have led them to a Balanced Farm Environment Award. And now one of their community members has an everlasting legacy. You know, it's a unique little crop, this one, because uh, this plant was actually found by one of our staff members. We came across a plant that had thrown, you know, a vastly different looking berry. And, wow. you know, most people would look at that and go, there's something wrong, we need to throw that plant away. And we were really lucky that he, he came to us and he said, look, you know, I found this plant, do you want to go and have a look? And we said, yeah, sure, definitely. We really thought there was potential. It had a really nice floral sort of summer flavour to it. The best thing about it is the guy that found it, his name's Sol. We've got a chance to name a plant that comes out in summer, Sol, Sun, the person's called Sol, just it all fit together so well. And now Sol has a legacy. Yeah. It's cool to see Patrick and Lindsay's passion for quality, innovation and sustainability. But there's no way I could work here without eating half of their profits. Now I'm heading way up north to Hohora to meet some of the stars of our menu at Ahi on a farm unlike any in New Zealand. Living in Europe for so long, I got used to the Suino Nero, the Pata Negra, the great pigs of Italy and Spain. In New Zealand, we don't really raise pigs like that. But here in the far north, we've found a farm that raises pigs with respect, and this is truly free range. Hello, mate. How are you? Awesome. So good to be here. Yeah, good to see you. Oh, I've been buying your pigs for ages, so it's so amazing to get up here and see them. See where they come from. Man, they're just cruising around, aren't they? This is truly free range. Yeah. Where do these pigs originate from? Uh, England, and uh, a lot of the English pigs are named after counties. Yeah. Hence Berkshire, yep. Evan Large Black. Yeah, but um, you don't want to do that with the big sows that are out there because you'd be, um, we'd be on the menu. Um, what's that movie again? <laughs> Snatch. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. <laughs> On the menu today is leftovers from food factory production lines. What we don't eat, Wayne feeds his pigs. He doesn't need vegetables as the pigs are out on the land. So a big part of your philosophy here is letting pigs be pigs. Yep, so let them be pigs. And, and so low intervention. Yeah. What does that mean here? Well, it means before I started I read all the books about these rare breeds and they talked about when the sow's ready to farrow, you put her into an area and you make sure she's got a heat lamp and all the rest of it. And I pretty much worked out that the last thing a sow wants is me hanging around. Basically, they just live wild. Just live like any animal does in nature. Wow. It's really hard, you know, you see products come to the restaurant, it's all like inconsistent size, and then all the young chefs are complaining about it because it's more work for them. But now you come here and you see this sort of natural, low intervention, you're naturally going to get that variety of sizing. But to be honest, if you want free range, this is what you're going to get. You're going to get inconsistency. You're going to get injuries. Like we had a guy tell us, oh, my pick had a mark on its shoulder. Well, mate, have a look around here. <laughs> you know, they, they fight, they argue. They're rubbing on sticks, they're walking through the bush, they're getting prickles. If you want that uniform animal every week, same amount of fat, same size, everything the same, uh, yeah. you don't want free range. Well, I can see you've got a big heart, and I can see these pigs are living a good life. So I'm super stoked, man. I'm so happy to be here. Are you going to put me to work or what? Yep, we're going to load up the next one. I love getting my hands dirty. 
Honestly, like, I could have been a farmer. <laughs> really? If I wasn't a chef, I would have been a farmer. Well, actually, I spent a little bit of time in restaurants. Years ago, I was, um, went to Mount Cook after university, and I ended up the head steward there. Oh, cool. And then um, I went to the United States, ended up working in a Polish restaurant in Kansas. <laughs> Look at you. <laughs> it's a story just... in itself. <laughs> that is so cool. But then you understand how a chef works, you understand yeah. how kitchens operate. That's what I'm saying. You go home at the end of the night, your hair's full of cooking grease and whatever else is going on. Yeah. And um, there's no glamour in it. But you understand, like, you're raising an animal, but you've got experience in a kitchen. I think that's amazing. I wouldn't start to tell you how to cook, but a lot of the people we deal with, I would like to talk to them about what they do with our animal. Um, yeah, that's true. Okay. It's crazy when you think about flavour, right? What, what is the equation that equals flavour? It's like the food they well, you eat. You are what you eat. Yeah, your food they eat, um, the environment they live in, the low intervention. Um, the pigs or these animals living a happy life. I mean, this all equates to flavour at the end of pigs, the day. Pigs are one of the most... Um, I've eaten a few different animals that I've grown and hunted, yeah. and pigs seem to soak up the flavour of something like yeah. no other animal does. Because of the fat. Yeah, I could give them fish, right? Um, if I got a load of fish, I could give them that. <laughs> but I tell you what, they would reek for two weeks. The meat would taste like anchovies. It, yeah, <laughs> yeah, and it'd take two weeks to come right. Yeah. Uh, all right, that's pretty good. A little bit more over this end, you'll be done. <laughs> OK, mate. You can play this back to the kitchen hand. <laughs> so it'll be the same thing. I'm about to change the ground they're eating on today, so they'll be going on a new ground. Cool. It's so great to come here and see what Wayne's doing. These pigs are happy, they're healthy, and they are delicious. This is the way we should be raising pigs. I'm so proud to serve them on our menu. After the break, it's all about cooking up some magical dishes with phenomenal Northland ingredients. Using the amazing tropical fruit from Owen, I'm going to attempt two dishes today. One with Wayne's pork chops and the other with the shoulder. Banana leaves come from old mate Owen. He grows bananas and pineapples, so we're going to serve it with... Look at that. Look at that cool pineapple there. It's cute, isn't it? Honestly, it's the sweetest pineapple I've ever had in my life. Really? That banana was pretty good. Banana was good too, eh? That cast iron bacon dish over there. We're going to put some ashes in the bottom, then we're going to put the pork on top, and then we're going to bury it in ashes, and we're going to put the lid on. Okay. And we're going to like, we're going to come back, and it's going to be cooked so perfect, and all those leaves are going to be burnt. How long will that take, do you think? I don't know. <laughs> How long's a piece of string? You know. Look at the colour of that meat. I've given it a good salting and a peppering. You can see that when you look at a piece of pork. This is what you want to look for. You want to see that two centimetres of fat there. Okay. Fat is flavour. Sort of almost like a T-bone. That's a pork fillet there. That's actually a sirloin, and this is the back fat. Well, we're in the tropical north, so we need a little tropical inspiration here. Barbecue pork, barbecue pineapple, a little dressing of coconut cream in it, um, some fresh herbs, mint, chipotle peppers. Kind of like a salad, really. Barbecues and old washing machine drum bowl. That's super cool. I mean, and also cooking on pine cones, like instant heat, you know? It's like cooking on gas or something. Yeah. Do you want to be in charge of pork chops? Yeah. What I like to do is I'm going to cook them for ages like this. And now it's time to prep an ingredient that's brand new to me. The edible cacti, AKA the prickly pear. It sort of makes sense to go with this little salad I'm making. I know the skin's not edible. I've never used this before. I know it's delicious though, because I tasted it with Owen. I could just imagine a big bunch of prickly pear sitting on the, on the pass of the kitchen and people walking in and going, what the hell are you doing with that? It's like, this is where the magic happens, you know, in the unknown. Everyone likes to play it safe and do stuff they know. And... You know, when you have a little bit of knowledge that you get by visiting these amazing people, all of a sudden you start to think about what else you can do in the restaurant. That's a prickly pear, right? Yeah, yeah. It's quite slimy and weird, eh? But it's nice. I like it. This is the male banana flower. So we had this idea, the banana plantation, that we're going to make little plates. So we're going to try and have a crack at that. So we've got this beautiful plate here. Look at those, aren't they cool? Pork and pineapple, it tastes as good as it sounds. 
The sweetness and acidity of the pineapple rips through the succulent roasted pork fat without overpowering it. Caramelising sugar is one of the secrets to making things taste delicious, right? And all ingredients have a certain amount of sugar and so it's like caramelising meat, changes the flavour. Super simple, super simple. Oh man. Pork's cooked beautifully, Wayne. People think that you have pig well done. You really don't. No, you don't, no. So you want it, you don't want it medium rare. No, 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 you don't want it medium rare, but you want it medium. You want it rosé, they say in French. Okay, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna dress this. The little prickly pear is awesome. The barbecue, sweetness of the pineapple, a little bit of spice, um, the coconut cream kind of brings it all together. I mean, this is what it's all about, coming to a place like this, seeing how these animals are raised, and getting inspired by the ingredients of the regions. This is going to be real simple. We're just going to do in a little Italian number, right? Because these pigs remind me of the Suino Nero from Sicily. So this is very, very, very expensive balsamic uh, from Italy, from Modena, made by an old lady. A friend of mine brought it back. And so it's just like that. A little bit of balsamic, a little bit of basil. It really is superb. Cheers, mate. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for a great day. All right. I'm seriously impressed. You, I know you see this every day, but for me, it's magic. It's a good way to eat it. Thank you. Beautiful. Nice the man. Thank you, guys. The greatest thing for me as a chef is stumbling upon new ingredients. I'm forever learning and evolving with the help of great produce providers. I'm excited to head back to Ahi and create new things for our customers. Visiting Owen in his tropical fruit orchard was a real revelation. You know, I never knew we could grow great bananas and pineapple here. And I was super inspired by a dish we used to cook when we were a kid, and that was wrapping a banana in tin foil with slices of chocolate inside the banana. Banana goes black, the chocolate mounts, and you sort of eat it around the campfire. So we've done a version of that. It's super simple. A little bit of apple marigold for herbaceousness. I guess heading to a tropical fruit place in Northland, you just don't think New Zealand's humid enough, tropical enough. But really it is truly the tropical north. We have the humidity, we have the climate, we have the soil, and maybe we're growing tropical fruit better than anywhere else in the world. Table 23. The New Zealand food story is all about honouring the amazing people who grow, harvest, fish, forage and farm, giving us not only their fantastic and unique products, but also their generosity of knowledge, people and ingredients. This is the New Zealand food story.